Hi, this is Randy from Go Big Park. Today we're going to work on a 600 CFI engine rebuild on a 2011 Rush. Um, here's the sled right here. We got my son Noel here. So. He's, he's the one that bought the sled. Uh, we bought it with problems on purpose because we saved a bunch of money. So this one looks like it's going to be a little easier than my 800, which I just finished up yesterday because it looks like this whole overstructure is bolted in. There's a bolt on this side and that side. You know, we can probably remove this where on mine it was glued. So uh, we left it in. So anyway, I'm going to get uh, filming Noel taking this apart. I'm going to show you what we're going to have for parts here. We're hoping all it needs is a top end. We'll know more once we get into it, but we have the uh, SP1 T Molly series piston kits, which I use um, on my 800 and I've used them before on other sleds. And then we have the Vertex, used to be Winter Rosa, top end gasket set, and I bought new uh, rod needle bearings for this sled because it does have 4,400 miles on it. So uh, we'll get started. Well, don't pull it. You might have to use a screwdriver. See, there's a little tab right there. Mm -hmm. Get a, one of those smaller screwdrivers. I think if you kind of push down and in. Oh, that works way better. Yeah. And then we gotta get this apart somehow. Yeah, that wasn't too bad. All right. So you are taping this so we know where everything goes, right? Yep. And then we got this kind. These are a little easier. So I say. It's always easy until you start recording that and then it goes wrong. Yeah, the recording more for you and I so we know how everything goes back together. Okay, film this. I got black going to white and black going to black, so it must not matter. Mm-mm. They're just here and there. Get a good picture of this. I don't know where all this is supposed to go, but there's not even stuff hooked to it. Yeah, and there was this. And that this. was for the hood. Right, but. This was for the uh, heated shield port. This probably for a tether, which we don't have. This is for the hood. Okay, you're pointing the camera where I'm. Yeah. Okay. Get on that metal part of it. Pretty smart, aren't I? Mm -hmm. So you can't get it wrong because one's a male, one's a female. Okay, that's good. Okay, now you can start cutting these zip ties. I'll hold this. All right. Um, this one. So this didn't go anywhere. These are still plugged in. Usually there's a bag all this stuff's in. They must have took the bag off for some reason. Are there any other zip ties? Or these two? These don't go anywhere. Oh, this we got another one of those weird Which clamps. I'm not sure is normal or not. It's electrical. I think tape. what we gotta do now is come over to this side and get rid of this belt, this oil tank and belt cover, so we got room to work. So this, you see what I'm doing here? Mm-hmm. That's unplugged. And 
Is that unplugged yet? You can no. unplug that. Yeah. It's like some of these fittings are gonna need to be cleaned up. We're, I'm gonna set the camera down and do that real quick. Yup. Okay. What are we recording here? We're gonna cut this zip tie and unplug this sensor right here that goes to the head, the temp sensor. Okay, so that one's out. What else is plugged in the bad boy? Copyright. I got a, this thing's not leaking, is it? Get a good picture of how that's routed here. Let me get a light in there. So all this stuff's on top of the... All these wires are hooked to the zip tie there that we're going to have to get rid of. So all these wires are are hooked to here that plugs into the mm -hmm. CDI. Yeah. Are zip tied down to that bracket. You see that? I see it, but does the camera see it? So what's the other? Let's go see what the other side looks like. I got a zip tie right there. But that's to the fuel rail. Is there one? Yeah, there's another one right here. It's like hard to see. You might have to come in from the top and look down. Oh. How am I supposed to see what we're looking at? Is that... There we are. All right, we removed the overstructure, the pipe, a bunch of the wiring, the oil tank, clutch cover. Now we're just pulling the head on this guy. Oh, there's coolant in there. There we go. Thought we had that disconnected once. Yeah, that one's good and tight, this one not. That's the side that had low compression, right? Yep. Good news is, I mean, the cylinder looks okay. I think the rings are shot. Cool, well, we just gotta remove the cylinder, but I think what we should do is vacuum out this coolant first. Sound like a plan, Stan? Sounds like a plan. All right. Jeez. I don't think somebody used the old uh, torque wrench. What do you think? I'd say probably not. The good old college try. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, before we go any further. Did you loosen that one? Yeah. So before we go any further, we gotta remove the fuel rail and fuel injectors. Oh shit, there's leaking cool. all over the electronics. That's okay. We'll pop, pack that right there. All right, we got the uh, top end off the uh, 600 CFI. Um, I don't know how much of it I got filmed. Here's one of the fuel injectors. Another fuel injector. Here's our crankcase. Um, just keeping rags or to keep things out of there. The uh, top end. Looked about the way I expected. I wasn't sure how bad it would be, but the um, PTO side was good. So that's uh, this piston. Looks pretty good. It looks like the ring was starting to get some, uh, starting to open up a little bit, but not too bad seen worse but this one on the mag side not great we actually had a busted ring and then the uh, piston uh, ring land opened up and actually broke near the top so I'm gonna send this jug out because there's too many scratches in there I mean the aluminum you might be able to get off but there's the scratches are deeper than I care to see, so I'll probably get that replated and um, clean and test my injectors, uh, put it back together, and hope for the best. So I've decided to uh, take this thing the rest of the way down. I'm going to pull the motor and put new seals on each end of the crank just in case that might have caused some of our issue and then i'm gonna um you know check everything out the water pump the oil pump um split the case obviously to do that and then uh start reassembling everything with new seals so should be interesting So we got the engine out and I split the case. Everything looks pretty good in here. Um, gonna put new seals. This is the suspect seal here because I, the mag side's what blew down or burned down. So we'll put new seals in and seal this case back up and start reassembling. But in the meantime, I'm gonna power wash the uh, inside the chassis try to get that as clean as possible so uh we'll be back with you in a minute wipe everything down one last time okay and try and get it clean one. i gotta wipe the wipe the mating surfaces
Okay. We're going to go to the clean side. A little more juice. We're just going to wipe the surface where the two halves come together. Okay, I think we're ready to put it together. So guys, we put the crankcase back together. We just need to screw it down as to this spec. So over here, we're working on it. We're putting all the bolts in. Um, just gonna screw them down in order. Some people might use a driver here, but I wanna make sure I torque them evenly, so I'm just going down by hand. Put a touch of pressure on each one. Now it's time to get the torque wrench out. And it said 22 foot pounds. I am going to start out with 11 foot pounds. So I'm going to set this to 11. Foot pounds. There's ten, eleven. Start over. One. Six. Seven. Now we're going to bring it up to 22. Let me double check the instructions. Yep, 22 foot pounds. <clears throat> we're at 11. Sure, it stays there.
You did the first four, right? Yep. Now we're on five. We're gonna let that sit a few minutes and we'll come back and check them again. All right guys, so right now we're setting the piston running end gap so everything works together properly. What are we setting it to? Uh, what is it, the 20th thousand? 20,000th. 20,000th. According to the book, we gotta be between 17 and 25, so I'm just shooting for 20. This is still just a hair tight, so I'm gonna take a little off. That's probably enough. And then we're gonna set it back in the piston. And use my piston, or set it in the cylinder and use my piston to get it down evenly. pretty even. Hello, bro. Yo. Yos. We are setting piston ring end gap. End gap. Gotta have the proper gap because I'm gonna tell you, explain why. When the cylinder and the piston heat up when you first start it, one's gonna expand faster than the other, possibly. So if your piston expands, it's gonna push the um, ring out. And if the cylinder is still small, it could, uh, the rings could touch, the ends of the rings touch each other, which could cause it to seize up. Ready to install the cylinders. You know what? We're gonna need gaskets. Let me get the gaskets set up. Looks like your piston has to go left a little. Okay, bring her down. Ooh, that one's about on. Okay, hold on, stop. Okay, bring her down. Down? Here, I think I got it. No, 
That one's on. Excellent. Awesome. All right, cool. Now we just got to do the other one, huh? Yeah. All right. Okay. Now. Huh. Um, Let me just grab that one. And did we, we haven't oiled this piston yet, so no. better do that. Alright, you don't have any dry spots, right? All right. Grab the piston. I'm going to turn this up a little and try to get under that gasket. Oh. I guess that's all the further it goes. So, you got to look to make sure that, see where that pin is? Yeah. You gotta be around the pin at both of them. Okay. And you gotta hold them from these. You gotta get your hand underneath and around these sides. Right. See, there's no sides yeah. right here on each side. So like, well, that's most of the way. Just gotta wiggle it a little bit. <laughs> there it is. Oop, there it is. <laughs> Looking good. Actually, a torque uh, spec on these two. Torque spec and a uh, tightening sequence. doing a mid torque to uh, 15 foot pounds and then we're going to take them up to 22 as the uh, service manual says 22 foot pounds on the 600 head actually that's six or eight hundred Or 25 foot pounds, it was right. Mm -hmm. 25. Oh. Magnifying this up a little so I can see it. 25. Start with cylinder or bolt number one. Here. Can't get any leverage. 
Hungry Giant. Do you want me to hold Grab the motor, will you? Yep, here, let me set this down. True set. We're good. Sweet. Let's put the cap on this if we can find it. Over here, I thought. Right here. Okay, next on the agenda. Now let's fix this. Drop it. Came out of the head when I was dorking around with it. You know what this is? Hmm. Thermostat. All right, got the uh, engine assembled. Um, I left the exhaust manifolds off because when I put this back in the chassis, I got to hook this hose up and that hose, and I feel that might get in my way with the chassis and everything, but I'm not sure. Easy enough to put on later, so that's what I'll do. I got the throttle, the reeds, and the throttle, or what do you call them? Um, throttle body boots back on. And this thing's ready to go, I think. So I gotta do something with these fuel injectors tomorrow. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, try to hook 12 volt power source to them, make sure they're opening and closing, and then try to spray some carb cleaner through them probably. Hope that cleans them. Um, the sled, like I said, the sled was running when I uh, took it apart, so I know they work. I just don't know why that mag side burned down. So put new PTO seals in. I put, um, I'm going to check the injectors and clean them, and hopefully that takes care of it. All right, we're on day about four or five with this uh, 600 uh, Rush, my son's. And we got the motor over here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna assemble the fuel rails, the fuel injectors, put the throttle bodies on, hook up the oil pump, get ready to throw this thing back in the chassis. So that's uh, functioning now. Fuel injection is in. Fuel rails. I think we're ready to put it back in the uh, chassis. All right, got the motor and the motor mounts. Now it's just a matter of hooking up the plumbing and all this electrical, which there's a lot. 
So we'll get going on that and get back to you. All right, I got the motor back in. Sorry, I haven't been filming it, but I just been concentrating on getting work done. Um, not really as concerned about filming it, but just in case you wanted to see where we're at so far. So the first thing I did is I got the motor mounts started on all four sides. Um, hooked up the throttle cable back to the carbs or the throttle buys. Then I hooked up all my coolant lines and I put my manifold on, my exhaust manifold, and um, my coolant lines, and then started running the wiring. So I kind of, in the oil, the um, oil line, which the tank will go here. So I got that over to here. These plug into here, no big deal. Um, this is just sitting here right now. Cause I'm trying to get an idea how all these wires are gonna run. This goes to the fuel pump. I got a new fuel filter on. Um, these wires will end up coming up front here when I put the overstructure back in, which has the uh, AC-DC converter, I think. Um, the coils and, you know, my pipe sensor will go on the pipe once I get it in. But right now, I ordered new motor mounts, which go here, here, and two on the other side. I don't want to get too much on until the motor mounts come in. I want to change those out before I get too much stuff in the way. And then I can finish hooking everything up. And I get the rest of the wiring plugged in, get the pipe on and hopefully be good to go. We gotta put coolant in it. Gotta mix some gas and oil because there's really no good way to bleed the pump. Um, the oil pump, I'm not sure. All this stuff in the way, you're not getting to it from this side. I don't think I can get to it from this side. Let's take a look. Oh, I can see it. Um, there's no way I can get to bleeding it if I'm lucky I did bleed it before I put it in uh, when it was still on the bench but if I'm lucky I might be able to maybe snap the uh, pop that arm off and hold it wide open while it's running and put the arm back on but I'm not sure so to be safe I'll mix oil and gas 50 to 1 hope for the best I guess um, give that oil line some time to uh, flush all the air out hopefully there won't be much air in it so that's where we're at and uh, hopefully we'll see it running soon all right just rebuild it we're gonna give it a try um, I'm just gonna give it a couple of little yanks a minute Try it.
pretty cool. <laughs> Considering how far apart we had her. <laughs> like all the way. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, it's smoking, so it must be getting some oil. Try it again.